What I want to do with this poem by Robert Frost, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, is to illustrate how there's a surface level to this poem and a depth level. Um, the surface level is just the basic thing the poem says. Let's read it quickly. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, miles to go before I sleep. So, <clears throat> to write a level 2 critique on this, you first need to provide a summary and then an interpretation. The summary, summary may go something like this. Uh, Frost depicts, uh, Robert Frost in his poem, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, depicts a... Um, Weary traveler traveling through a snowy night with his horse, um, eh, stopping to look at the beautiful panorama in the moonlight of uh, a s woods filling up with snow. And uh, he ponders the whiteness of the snow and the, the rest and the security that must be there in the woods. Okay, so there's the recap. More or less, could be fixed uh, perhaps, but it's good enough. And then the next step would be, you know, wh what does this really mean? Is there some other level here and you must uh, you know do some analysis on this to see some of this but you know I know for sure that um, the traveler is not in the village okay that the man who owns the woods is in the village his house is there but uh, the traveler here is not in the village so think of what a village means think of what it means to have a village security especially you know it seems like this is a, a, a time in uh, American's history where the woods we're still, you know, encroaching civilization, the, 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 the um, unknown of the forest was there right next to the limits of the city. Think of how uh, woods have traditionally been uh, <clears throat> portrayed as danger, full of danger, uh, full of wild beasts and, and uh, sort of uh, magical things. So the village is safety. Um, the man is out of safety. He's, he's out in the dark at night. Uh, it's harsh. He, he's traveling toward the village, toward the society group, towards this comfort. Uh, but he, he stops all of a sudden and looks at the woods. You know, if the village represented everything that I said it did, what would the woods represent? Uh, I covered that a little bit already, but, but the, the unknown, nature in its brute form, hostile to man... Uh, full of mystery, a threatening mystery, uh, and unknown dangers, etc. All right. Uh, the horse here. We I know we have a horse in this poem. Why is the horse, uh, you know, put next to the voice of a man um, or a person, a, a writer? Um, well, what does it mean for an animal to to shake a, against the notion of going into the woods as opposed to going to the village? The animal knows where he needs to go in this cold, dark night. He needs to go to that shelter, that warmth, that light. Think of a village at night. Think of the fires that are keeping the house warm. So you would see the glows of the windows and that sort of thing. Uh, there's light there. There's warmth. There's community. The animal wants to go there. All right. The animal just has this instinct to let's, you know, there's there's a mistake stopping here. Don't, don't, let's not go to the woods. Let's go to the village. Uh, but the man has sort of a, 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 a pull in him to go to those woods. All right. Now, if the village represents human life, wouldn't the woods, could we make a case that it represents, um, death or, or uh, that which is inimical or hostile to life? Uh, if in the village there is light and the woods there is darkness, could we not say that in the village there is life, in the woods there is death? Uh, think of the coldness here, the sterility of the winter, the dead leaves, the, the barren branches, cold, the whiteness of death, the coldness of the snow. You know, and at one point this man says, this is lovely, this, this idea is lovely to me, but I have promises to keep. And miles to go before I sleep. Now, if he's looking at the woods and saying, I, 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 I want to sleep there, what might that suggest concerning this man and what he might be thinking about the end of his life and, and the quietness of death, the repose of the eternal sleep? It might appear to him at this point in his life that this is, this is something to be desired, but he's not going to go there until his time comes because he has promises to keep. All right, so there's a duty to others to God, perhaps in this era of America's history, God would still be um, holding, uh, you know, part of the uh, 
people's imagination and 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 uh, and, and beliefs um, as he is today for many people, but but uh, th more so in this time of America's. So maybe this man's sense of duty is keeping him from just giving up. I I don't know. All right, but but I I think I could make a case that that's a possible interpretation. Now, what you want to do when you interpret something is you want to say you want to work on the notion that it's first possible, and then it is. If you can make it established that, you're, you're fine. Now, if you can actually begin to move it into the probable, that's even better. But everything I just said, I, I would write down as part of the interpretation. And I wouldn't, you know, couch it with, well, this is what I kind of think it's saying. I, I would say something like, now, Frost's deeper meaning is that, uh, you know, death could provide a, a quiet and eternal rest, but uh, one has the duty to live life with all its burdens and late nights and cold weather. Uh, and inconveniences because of one's duty to others and one's calling towards a purpose in life. Uh, that's how I would write the interpretation. Now, again, you know, you, you might be stretching it. You might be kind of off if if Frost were to come up uh, from the grave and say, oh, no, that's not what I meant. We would have to give him precedence over your interpretation. But, but you know what? Until that happens, you have a possible interpretation here. Run with it. Put that up at, as, as the interpretation, part of the level two critique, and then respond to those ideas in your evaluation.